Oh, check this out, guys. This is a brand new release from Sigma, a Sigma 50 millimeter F 1.2 DGDN art lens. And uh, this thing right here is under embargo. I had it for about a week or so because I am one of the cool kids, at least Sigma thinks so. Appreciate Sigma Canada sending this out. Of course, it's a loner that I have to send back. They don't uh, get any input on this video, but it is nice of them to send this out so that I can review it for you fine folks. And as you would expect, this is an excellent lens. It's a Sigma art lens, and this 1.2 competes very mightily with the Sony G Master 50 millimeter f 1.2 except it's a little bit lighter and it costs a whole lot less so uh, we should talk about it so let's talk about the build quality of this bad boy as you can see it is not a small lens by any means when you take off the lens hood it is a much smaller looking lens balanced pretty nicely here on my a7 IV lots of room for my fingers with the way that Sigma designs the mount and it weighs about 740 grams which is lighter than the Sony G Master 50 1.2 that is about 788 grams in real world use you probably won't notice that much difference but it is a bit lighter and it is certainly cheaper if you have something smaller like a ZV-E1 or an a7C2 then uh, it's going to be a little bit front heavy but with the beefier Sony cameras here the a7R5 or this a7 IV something like that I think it's actually balanced pretty nicely it gets a bit longer looking when you have the lens hood on there but uh, I think it looks more professional you know I intimidate people with not only my good looks but my professional looking camera and uh, the lid here the lid it's the hood it's a button hood so you just press the button to slide on or off and uh, that way it locks in place very satisfying nice lens hood a nice pedal lens hood not cheap feeling at all it also has an autofocus to manual focus switch an autofocus lock button you have an aperture ring that is clicky or declicky depending on which switch you put it on and also a lock for the aperture ring so it doesn't accidentally slip into one or the other as a 72 millimeter filter thread on the top and there is some weather sealing here at the back this is a weather seal lens from Sigma the focusing ring is nicely damped and turns very smoothly the minimum focus distance is 40 centimeters which is par for the course for a lens like this now obviously this is another 50 millimeter lens and there are a plethora of 50 millimeter lenses for most camera systems so a lot of people are thinking why are they making another one and the reason is is that people want them people buy 50 millimeter lenses all the time it is the most popular focal length when it comes to prime lenses so manufacturers are always trying to make a newer and better 50 millimeter and this one is the cream of the crop right here 50 millimeter is extremely versatile it's an extremely useful focal length whether you want to do portraits even in video you can do talking head if you have a little more room in your studio you can do street photography travel photography capture family moments if you are in low light situations especially with this 1.2 you're in dim environments you're trying to take some wedding portraits things like that this lens will be great for that there are so many uses for a 50 millimeter focal length and that's why they keep making them now when it comes to the autofocusing this is using sigma's new advanced hla autofocusing system and it is as good as the sony system in my opinion it is just it slides on like little rails it is instant it is so fast it is dead silent it grabs you every time there is no hesitation whatsoever whether you're using afc afs if tracking this is as good as any native sony lens on a sony body just a perfect autofocus system here on this sigma lens flaring and ghosting is another bright spot for this lens pun hilariously intended the flaring is quite good well controlled there is just a tiny bit of flaring that looks very nice there's no way any flare even if you get sun in the direct center of this lens it is not going to ruin your photos and in terms of contrast you are still going to retain tons of contrast even in very backlit situations so as you would expect the coatings are the best of the best on this lens and it really shows with flaring and ghosting 
When it comes to the bokeh, it is just spectacular. The out of focus areas look so wonderful. This great fall off from the things that are in focus to the things that are out of focus. The bokeh balls themselves, they are quite round. There is uh, no real mess, no onion ringing inside the bokeh balls. They are very clean. And because of those 13 aperture blades, then you get that very nice, smooth, round bokeh balls, even when you're down at F1.2. It does get a tiny bit rounder down at about F1.2. 1.8 but uh, at, even at f1.2 very pleased with the bokeh so this lens performs extremely well at f1.2 which is great because that is one of the reasons you'll be paying the extra money for this 50 millimeter to get that 1.2 so you definitely want it performing well at that 1.2 but not only does it do that but at the minimum focus distance wide open it is also performing very well so still lots of contrast it's still a very sharp image which is great to know that you can stop this lens all the way down and use it with complete confidence that's what you'd expect from a sigma art lens and that's what you're going to get in terms of sun stars as the sun is going down here in toronto you are going to get some very interesting sun stars it has 13 aperture blades so it creates 26 point sun stars they start to become fairly prominent at about f8 and it definitely gives you a very nice unique looking sun star in your photo that I think looks super cool when it comes to sharpness this lens does not disappoint an extremely sharp lens from the center to the edges so if you need sharpness for your photos no problem with this guy right here so when it comes to low light this is about as good as it gets here I have a Sony full-frame camera with this f1.2 lens so if you are in dim situations say you're indoors you're a wedding photographer you're trying to take portraits of people in low light situations here you go also if you want to do street photography in the nighttime you want to creep around in the dark so nobody sees you here you go this is your lens creepo and also people who aren't creeps when it comes to chromatic aberration and longitudinal chromatic aberration it is mostly good news here you will see some chromatic aberration if you are pixel peeping you stop down to f 1.2 as you might expect you will see some chromatic aberration if you drag up your shadows put them into the light when it's very high contrast scenes you'll be able to see that chromatic aberration now that is easily correctable in post and uh, I don't see it as much of an issue and certainly something that you would expect and it's gone by f 2.8 so a pretty good job with the chromatic aberration now the loca the longitudinal chromatic aberration that's extremely well controlled which is good news because that is very hard to correct in post you will still see some down at f 1.2 and once again pretty much gone by f 2.8 but i can definitely live with the longitudinal chromatic aberration that you do see wide open very well done by sigma this lens also exhibits minimal focus breathing which is great because it's a third party lens you're not going to be able to use say on a sony that focus breathing compensation that you can use with native sony lenses so it's great to have a lens that doesn't have much focus breathing in case you want to stack your photos in post or you're doing long focus pulls in video it does a good job you can still see some focus breathing but it is quite minimal when we talk about drawbacks to this lens the first one i'm going to mention is the size and although this is the lightest 50 millimeter f 1.2 autofocus lens that you will find it is not the lightest by much which means it is still a big and heavy lens you can definitely find much smaller 50 millimeter lenses you of course are not going to get that amazing image quality and have an f 1.2 but this is a hefty lens to take around so you better be sure you need that low f-stop and that great quality otherwise maybe save your back and your camera bag and get a smaller 50 millimeter lens there is no optical stabilization in the lens now that is the case with a lot of prime lenses a lot of the g master primes things like that they don't have optical stabilization they rely on the cameras in body image stabilization or electronic stabilization to get the job done still it's always nice to have optical stabilization in a lens another drawback for sony users is that you will be limited to that 15 frames per second that all third-party lenses are limited to so if you have a camera that can shoot more than 15 frames per second you are not going to get that with this particular lens i don't have any cameras that are above 15 frames per second so it's not a big deal for me but if you're someone who wants that crazy burst rate of that new a9 camera then uh, this lens is not for you so if you are looking at that 50 millimeter focal length you want the best of the best f 1.2 and you don't have to pay g 
Master prices. Sigma did it again with this lens right here. It is a great option for people who want that type of lens, but also want to save a few bucks. Good job, Sigma. Thanks for sending this out for review. And uh, you know, thanks you. Thanks. Thanks you for watching. It's getting cold now. My lips are getting numb. So thanks you for watching this. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, my thumb is frozen.